Traditionally, if we were going to analyze a radioactive sand, uh, we would uh, hope for a thorium curve. Uh, unfortunately, they're kind of rare, and uh, we would use the thorium curve uh, just like a gamma ray log. Pick a clean line, pick a shale line, and calculate the shale volume. Uh, we can also uh, get the uh, shale volume from density neutron separation uh, sometimes. That's if the sand is uh, radioactive, usually because of feldspar. Feldspar behaves like a sandstone. Density neutron would be very close together in a clean feldspar sand. But if there was clay, uh, there would be some separation, and we could uh, calculate the shale volume that way. Sometimes the SP works uh, in some uh, radioactive sands. The resistivity in the surrounding beds is low enough that the SP still behaves like a normal SP would, and we can calculate shale volume from that. However, there are places where uh, none of these methods work very well, and uh, that's when uh, we have to use our imagination, and you'll see that in our first exercise. I'll show you how to handle the fact that the gamma ray, the thorium, and the potassium curves are not overly helpful in finding the shale volume. And the rock is a mixture of quartz and dolomite, so the density neutron log is not very helpful either. It does take a little bit of skill and daring sometimes to get log analysis to work. Uh, we normally would get porosity from the complex lithology model because it doesn't really care what minerals are present as long as we do an appropriate shale correction first. And finally, we do water saturation from a shale corrected model, such as the Seaman Dew model or the dual water model, if you happen to prefer that one.